So hello and welcome everybody to this um, Octane tutorial and um, as you might have already seen I have created this little Nespresso capsule and we will try to make it really look great and realistic. Uh, I found a shot on the internet uh, that looks like this and I think that the material on this thing is kind of interesting because it looks a little bit metalish and it also looks a little bit with a plastic finish when we look here a little bit at these reflections. So it's kind of kind of a funny material and there's also some kind of deformation going on. So we might have to build a little bit of a bump map here. Uh, might have to go with displacement, we will see. I think a bump will probably be enough. Even for a close-up shot we might get, can get away with bump. Even though bump mapping is of course not geometry deforming, it's just really fake. But uh, I think it might be okay. And then we will create some kind of table, uh, maybe with some wood. Maybe we won't do the plate here because it's kind of hard, I think, to find a texture like that. And creating this material from ground up, I think, is kind of scary, to be honest. And might take just too long. But what's really interesting are those, I hope they are called capsules in English. I, I, I have no clue. I mean, in, in uh, German, it's just called a uh, kapsel or kapsel. Uh, so whatsoever. Um, so you can follow me along by modeling this. I did upload this as well, even though it's just a silent recording because I thought, okay, it's really almost self-explaining, so I don't really have to talk much here uh, while I'm modeling this. And also I can concentrate a little bit better um, when I'm doing modeling work, which is uh, better for me, definitely. But I think it's not really a hard object to model anyway. Uh, but I thought I still record it and upload it. Maybe some of you just simply want to follow along how I did this. Okay, so what we need to do is first of all, we need to create one basic material and then we just simply need to change the color. So this shouldn't be much of a problem. Um, we might have to combine two materials uh, in a mixed material. So maybe some kind of metallish material and then lay over it some kind of um, plastic material and I will show you how we can do that and as soon as we have finished one of those materials we can just simply apply this to all the others and then we can set up the table and set up the light and make it real shiny and kind of production shot like it. Let's just simply say a nice realistic shot. Okay, so let's go create shader cinema for the octane material and we really need to, I mean I didn't record this tutorial before or did try the shaders because I really want you to see what my work progress is, what my process is, how I get things done and how I get into it and, and, and start to get closer and closer and closer till we really finish this material. So let's create one Octane material, then let's go plugins, Cinema for the Octane, or maybe just simply let me change here the layout to Octane user, then here we have the live viewer and then we can just simply go objects HDRI environment. If you really want, want to go with an HDRI environment for the final shot, it's up to us. I think for this for this shot, it might be cool because um, this was probably shot outdoors, I think. Maybe, maybe, maybe indoors, I'm not sure. Uh, but when I look at this table, how this is uh, a little bit word off and stuff like that. So I really think this has been shot outside. So it might be cool if we go load some nice exterior HDRI and I just simply try to achieve this look. Okay, so first of all I just want to load some HDRI which you will get uh, as well of course. So I will just simply use my old industry hall um, HDRI. I really love it to be honest. It's most of the time for testing I use this HDRI because it's just such a nice lighting uh, when you uh, play with it a little bit and so we can get the first impressions what is going on and how our material will look like um, until we get our final lighting in. But for now, this is definitely more than enough. Um, so we will go here a little bit up with the power. I think something like uh, uh, 2 might be fine, 2.2, 2.25. Let's do it like this. And I mean, I really want to focus more on this uh, material here on the backside because it looks kind of rose gold. I mean, I, I did just make it to uh, a, a lecture for the iPhone 6s and for the V-Ray tutorials if you want to check it out as well. Um, and I think this, this material really looks kind of like that. And also the light gets here, the reflection gets a little bit broken, 
by those streaks. There are also two streaks on all those materials, as you can see, that are going from left to right. We might not really have to recreate those streaks, but at least we need to get this bump mapping here in, as you can see. Um, right here, we have all those streaks, so we really need to do that. Um, but first of all, I really want to focus on this material here in the back, because it looks kind of funny. I mean, we can't really go with a metal material, because those boxes where the coffee is in are probably not made out of metal, because otherwise it would be just too expensive, even for an espresso. And uh, also the machine probably couldn't pop this thing. Or maybe just this little part is plastic and the rest is a little bit kind of... Anyway, it just looks kind of metalish to me, to be honest. So I think we should start out here, of course, with a glossy material if you want to go metal or some kind of metal. Let's go index and let's go maybe... Let's maybe go, go full. Let's maybe go 8 for now. Like I said, we really need to um, get ourselves closer and closer as we go on uh, and then diffuse completely black to create a metal material. As Beckler, we'll just simply try to achieve right away, as good as we can, this rose gold look, even thought we only need to get close, you know, because we have so feel, so much possibility in post work later on, and with multi-passes, and so on, and so on, to really achieve this, um, that we don't have to, to hit it right away, so that's really not, not our problem. So I will put this... Um, file here on my second screen. I will just simply pick up the color here with the color picker. If I leave this here on my first screen, it will just simply always pop down to the uh, desktop menu here. And I have no chance to doing this, so this is why a second screen also comes in handy. So I go over here and will try to pick up some nice rose gold, maybe... Yeah, maybe something like that. Looking okay, maybe a little bit brighter. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe like this. Okay, so in the RGB channel 230, in the G uh, 182, and in the B 174. So red, green, and blue values is just simply the values that you can type in so that you are on the same page as me. Okay, so let's go with that. And of course, we have here a lot of roughness going on. Um, so this roughness comes first of all from the roughness channel itself, uh, so, so we need to turn in some kind of roughness, that's for sure. But a lot of this um, diffuse reflection, um, or let's say blurred reflection, also comes a little bit from those streaks here, that's for sure. So let's first of all just simply bring in a little bit of roughness. And I think this is not rose gold enough, right? I don't think I think we're a little bit too far off. I think we have to turn in here a little bit more color, to be honest. A little bit more color. Uh, yeah, maybe like this. Uh, might look better. Okay, and let's drop this on here and let's see what we get. First of all, uh, yeah. Okay, we are definitely too far off from this rose gold color still, so we need to bring in more color here. Uh, uh, maybe like this. Okay, I think we're getting closer here. Uh, maybe not. Maybe we do. That looks a little bit more, a little bit more rose. Maybe like this. No, that's definitely not it. We can't go darker here, really. Maybe like this. Uh, no. No, we are too far in the orange section. I really hate, like I said, we don't really need to hit this right away. We can do so much in post work, so I simply will just leave it at that before I'm playing around with the stuff for, for 100 hours. I mean, right now it looks more like this color than this color, to be honest. Um, so we'll change this back here a little bit. Yeah, I think now we're going more rose. Let's look again. Yeah, I think now we're getting closer. Okay, that's good. Anyway. Um, First of all, what we need to do is I really want to bring in this um, yeah, kind of streaks. So we could try to make this simply with a bump map, like I said before, and with a noise. So we could try to make this with a noise if we want to. So let's just simply go procedural and let's try a noise. So let's load a Cinema 4D noise for now. And okay, we can see really good in a live view what's going on. This is just a... Uh, real pure awesomeness of um, Cinema for the Octane. And let's just simply try a few things here out. I mean, this is definitely not a bump. This bump might look a little bit like what we need. Let's change here the mapping method. I mean, we could also change... No, we can't change the mapping method here, really. Even 
we can change here the space, but that's really it. This is because we can't load the noise into a Cinema 4D Octane image texture. I mean, we could use also the Octane noise here if we want to, or the turbulence here, but I'd rather use a Cinema 4D Octane. Uh, a Cinema 4D integrated noise because you just simply have a lot of noises to choose from and I think this just simply comes in a little bit more handy. So let's go cubic here, cubic mapping and we really need to go smaller here so let's go something like, uh, let me make this bigger first of all, let's go here in the length maybe 20% and also here 20% and let's see what we get, okay, it's still way too big, let's go 1%, 1%. Um, Whoa, okay, let's maybe go here bigger, let's maybe go here 20. Okay, 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 okay. And I just need to make sure that those streaks are on there as well. The problem is that, that this shot is has, doesn't have such a, a good quality, to be honest. But I think here we don't have so many. I mean, we have some kind of bump going on, but just a different bump, I think. So what we should do is, I think we should go... Um, select, uh, first of all poly mode, select loop selection, uh, select the cylinder and I will just simply select those parts here, whoop, 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 holding down the shift key and then we go select set selection and then we will just simply drop the selection that we just made here into the selection so I think it will be just simply there and then we will drop, let's copy this octane material, let's get rid of the bump Let's just simply call this clean for now, clean, and let's call this here bump. We should really always name our stuff right from the right from the beginning, otherwise we will really go go crazy at some point. If you really have a big scene and a lot of materials loaded up, this is just that's not good. Okay, so let's drop the clean material on the cylinder, bring it into the first place here. Even though we don't need to do this, but just for I don't know, just looks a little bit better, I guess. Um, and let's play around a little bit more with this with this noise and also let me change the camera angle so I get a little bit more reflection from the scene into this thing here. So I can see a little bit more what's going on and how this thing is reflecting the stuff uh, from its surroundings. Um, so this bump is first of all I think way too high and also doesn't look good right now so we have to change this here. So let's maybe change this here to... Let's change this here for to 5, let's see what we get. Okay, that's not good. Let's change this to 0.2. Uh, okay, already okay. Let's maybe try this a spherical mapping. Okay, spherical mapping, we get something like this. Maybe I can change this here in the coordinates. Let's try to move this for 90 degrees. Okay, let's try it here. 90 degrees. Okay, now we get some kind of anisotropic map here. Which is not what we want, that's for sure. Let me pull this out here a little bit more. Let's reset this. Let's try to be cylindrical, probably the same thing. Flat is probably not good, no. A cubic is probably the way to go. It really maps it completely weird onto this object, to be honest. This is not cool. Uh, spatial might be okay. UV mapping did look okay, did also look like this. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can do here something. Or maybe I will just simply load a bump map and try it with other noise. Let's see if I have something lying around. Uh, you will also get a lot of maps through throughout this course. A lot of maps that I use all the time because they're just simply good and can be used over and over again. Let me I will just pause the video and let me search for a map quickly. Alright, so in the meanwhile my uh, two terabyte external hard disk crashed and won't work anymore, or just a little bit. So I have no access to some of my maps right now, which doesn't really isn't really a, a problem and I also don't think I really have a map that looks a little bit like that. So yeah. Anyway, then also the recording software uh, crashed as well on me because of the hard disk crash. Which is absolutely awesome. I have no clue what's going on today, but it's just it's just like that. Um, but I think we can make our our own file here. Um, I think 2048 by 2048 is more than enough. Probably could even go lower, but just to have a real nice map, we'll just try to create our own map here in in Photoshop. That shouldn't be much of a problem. So we go filter noise and uh, add noise. And we go 
Gaussian and monochromatic because I don't want to have a colored noise and then we can here change the amount and I think afterwards we need to make some blur on it to really get those long long streaks that we are looking for so right now we have really a detailed noise map as you can see um, which is pretty cool and now let's just simply go filter blur and let's go which is a good blur here a radial blur we don't need shape blur maybe we could use that or we just simply use a gaussian blur let's see no a gaussian blur will not help in any way that's for sure okay so we need something else we need huh maybe a box blur uh, no this won't help as well mm, which kind of blur do i normally use been a while i guess I think it might be okay if we just stretch this out maybe so let's go control t and let's stretch this really really big let's go even bigger here you can saw this will a little bit be nasty for our quality but this way we might get some streaks in or strokes in and let's make it like this as well and as this let's click on apply this is still way too small Let's do this again. Let's go really big here. Really big here. Let's go a little bit backwards. Let's make it here really, really big and really, really big here. Let's click on apply again and let's see what we get. Okay. Now Photoshop even needs to work a little bit. Not bad. Not often that I can see that. Um, yeah but really looks not okay. Okay, so that's definitely not the right way to go. This is for sure, so we need to make a new layer, delete this layer. Okay, let's go filter noise again, add noise. Yes, could not complete the add noise comment because it's probably blank, so we will just simply make this white here. Go filter noise again. What else? Reduce noise, despeckle, dust and scratches. Let's look at this maybe. Can we do here anything? No, we need a noise first of all, otherwise this won't work. So filter, noise, add noise, yes, amount, really depending on us. And Gaussian and monochromatic, let's zoom in here a little bit, let's see what we get. Okay, looking good. And now I really need to blur this somehow. It must be a blur. Let's really try maybe a radial blur. Yeah, then we get some kind of anisotropic map, so this is not what we are looking for. Because if we do this now, look at this. Also pretty cool, if you want to make a, your own anisotropic map, this is what you get. If you use this uh, radial tool. So that's really, really nice for all kind of, I don't know, dishes, all kind of metals. If you have such a, a radial, radial reflection or anisotropic reflection which is kind of nice that you can just simply do it like that inside of Photoshop. But this is exactly not what we're looking for. So... Hoo, hoo, hoo. Motion blur. Maybe motion blur. Yeah, motion blur. Okay, it was motion blur. As you can see, now we get those nice strokes in. Um, the only thing that is not cool that on the side it doesn't get so blurred. So we try it with an angle. Yes, first of all, I'll really bring it in the right angle anyway. Maybe something like this. Uh, minus 90, okay. Let's hit OK. And I think we can just simply cut away here a little bit. Or maybe let me get rid of this. Let's just simply try it again. Filter, blur, uh, motion blur. Let's maybe try a shape blur as well. Let's try a simple shape, something like this. Just want to see what we get if we use the different shapes. Maybe this one, this one. No, not really what we are looking for. Oops. This one might look okay. This one might be absolutely perfect for us, to be honest. Let's look at this thingy here. Yeah. Okay, radius maybe a little bit smaller. I'm gonna make it bigger right now, I guess. Let's make it small. Let's maybe make it 30. Okay, let's try maybe with 15. Oh, very nice. Okay, 
Uh, let's maybe go with 25. I think 25 might be fine. Okay, no. Ah, no, I did push this again. Don't do this to me! 25, okay, perfect. Let's hit OK. And let's try to get a little bit more contrast in here. Um, brightness, contrast. Let me first of all push the brightness up and then also the contrast here. Maybe I should do it with the curves. Maybe this works a little bit better. Probably works exactly the same, but anyway, let's just simply try it. Yeah, okay, something like this. Then maybe something like this. Ooh, wow, okay. Oh. Might not even be so bad to push this here really, really down. What's going on here? Let's just leave it here. Let's take this one. That's okay, let's push this down here. Oh. Over here. Yeah, something like this maybe. Okay. Oh sweet mother, what is going on? Come on. Okay. Alright. This might be okay for us, like this, not 100% sure sort, but yeah, might be okay. We will see what we get in, in Cinema 4D, if not we just simply have to redo this map. Um, shouldn't really be much of a problem. And let's also already rotate this map here a little bit, so that the strokes really are going in the right direction. Maybe like this, yes. Apply. Let me zoom in, yeah, it looks good, and now let's just simply scale it out here, here as well. Okay, dokey, oh, now we have to go here a little bit again. Okay, perfect, let's click on apply. And, yeah, I think that's it, I think the map looks really, really good, but we will see how, how it will look in, inside of um, Octane. So let's save this map out and let's save it as a TIFF file. Um, zero to hero TIFF. And let's call this just simply bump, uh, maybe capsule underscore bump. Let's save this. This cut layers is okay for now because I will leave this Photoshop file here open. And let's load this file in into our bump material, image texture, yes, and uh, let me search for this, okay, capsule bump, okay, it doesn't look too shabby, at least not in the preview here, alright, let's go, okay, first of all, it's mapped wrong, but it's definitely, we have something going on, and let's get rid of the roughness for now. I really want to see what the bump map is doing to the material, and it probably is doing a lot. Uh, okay. Uh, let me get the bump a little bit more down. And maybe a little bit more up, so I can really see where the strokes are and what we really get. Let's maybe turn this to 3. Okay, and let's change this here back to cubic. Okay, and let's make this 100, 100. So just simply a right click and... Oh, this is set to frontal now. Oopsie. <coughs> Whoa, sorry about that. <coughs> oh, again. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, Viva. Okay. Let's make this 10, 10 on both sides. Maybe let's give it here in the Wii up to 100. Let's just make it smaller here. Let's maybe go here 1%. And yeah, doesn't look too shady. Let's try it with a spherical mapping again as well. Uh, let's make this bigger here. We go here with 5. Yeah, this looks good actually. Let's maybe go here with 10. Now let's go even higher. Let's maybe go with 20. Something like that. Uh, 
no, this is not what we're looking for. Let's go cubic again. Let's go down to 1%. Let's go really down here with the bump. Maybe something like this. I think the strokes are still a little bit too too small, to be honest. Um, otherwise, I think I like it. Let's maybe go up here to 2%. Uh, maybe let's go up to 3 Let's go a little bit higher with the bump so I can see what's going on. Yeah, this might be okay. And let's go here 0.02 maybe. Let's go maybe 0.03. Okay. So as you can see, this bump also gives us, of course, some kind of, of blurriness in the material. And we have to adjust the bump then when we make the final shot. Because what you need to do, you really need to adjust the bump to the to the angle and to the distance that you are to the object because if I'm going like this I can't see anything of the bump anymore if I go really close of course I will see a lot of it so we need to adjust this later on when we have our final camera so let's just simply go with 0.06 here but we don't have enough roughness right now so let me open up those preview pictures again and let's look at this shot because here we can see it a little bit better thing so here you can see really those strokes I mean this is also kind of a close-up shot um, so we really have some strokes going on um, but we also have a lot more blurriness I guess let's look at those here as well and just those um, mm, 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 mm. so this is really way more blurry to be honest and as you can see here it looks like some kind of plastic finish so we need to create this as well later on um, so let's go with the roughness up again Till we get the desired look, maybe like this, maybe. Let's go a little bit more down with the bump. Let's go here 0.02, uh, maybe 0.04, something like this. Let's maybe make this here a little bit bigger. Let's maybe go here 5. Let's maybe go here 8. Okay, and now let's go down 0.02. Nah, this doesn't look good. Let's go smaller, 5%. Uh, let's go maybe 3%. Uh, might be okay. Maybe the maybe the let's let's try a different map as well. Let's go file new. Okay, and let's go filter, uh, noise, add noise. I mean, it's just my simple workflow. I mean, at some point you just. You have to get closer and closer and closer and if you're not satisfied with the material you just simply have to try out a different method and like i said i didn't uh, try this material before i started recording because i really thought it's just interesting for you guys how i get to this and and where i mean and also what i like and what i don't like i mean of course we could try to use this somehow but in the end i think i wouldn't be satisfied with the shot so we we have to go in a different direction so we just simply go here motion blur again and as you can see this looks now pretty pretty good i think let's maybe look here at the distance let's just simply go down with the distance maybe a little bit and maybe like this this looks pretty awesome i think so we have a lot of strokes going on let's click ok and let's maybe cut those unblurred things here a little bit away maybe like or maybe just simply cut the map here and go edit cut file new okay edit paste perfect file save as tiff as you might have guessed and let's call this capsule bump underscore two discard layers yes and let's maybe load this map i think this map will work out pretty good uh, i have a feeling that this map will work extremely good i got a feeling Oh, please don't listen to this. This was really... I'm sorry about that. Um, also, this gets mapped a little bit really crazy together. I really don't like this, how the cubic mapping works here. This is kind of annoying, to be honest, because here we get some kind of overlapping and... I don't know. Let's maybe really go with a spherical mapping here. And let me change this up here. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now we're getting way closer here. Let's maybe go bigger. Let's maybe go 160. Okay, let's go nuts. Let's go 300 and let's see what we get. 
Okay, now it's way too big, I guess. So let's give 150, maybe. Uh, 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 let's go up with the bump, maybe to 0 0.08. Let's see where our strokes are. They are looking pretty nice. Even though they are not, I mean, they are really going in all kind of directions, to be honest, but this shouldn't really be, shouldn't really be bothering us. I mean, we could also at some point get a package maybe like that at the supermarket. But let's make it a little bit bigger because the strokes are really, really bigger and not so close together. So let's maybe try to use 250. Mm, no, maybe, maybe 400. Yeah. Maybe 600. Yeah, and let's go really down here, 0 0.01 maybe. No, that's not good, 0 0.05, 0 0.02, 0 0.03. Ah, that's not, that's not too... Let me click on invert here as well, for now. Even though this will not change much, because this is really a black and white map where one stroke is black, one is white, so if I just simply invert this, it will probably look the same, so... forget about this. Mm. Let me look from a little bit more far away. Uh, too much bump, that's for sure. Let's maybe try it with 0 0.04. 0 0.03. 0 0.01. And if we go 0 0.01, I think we need to go here way smaller because otherwise we won't see anything. But if we're that low, we can't see anything anymore, so we really need to go up here. Ah, maybe like this 0.04 might be a really good value here. And here really 100%, 100%. Because this gives us a little bit of those of those strokes, and from this distance it looks really, really good, to be honest. Yeah, I think that's okay. And also the blurriness, I think, is pretty good. We get kind of this, yeah, blurriness here, which is nice. The only thing that is not looking so good is right now over here. This thing we need to change as well, that's for sure, and this down here. But I think the first thing that we should do is we should get this um, kind of plastic finishing over this metal material. Even though this isn't really metal, of course, but it has this kind of look. So we can in 3D just simply go metal and then put a plastic finishing over it. So it just simply looks extremely close. So let's go create shader, Cinema for the Octane material, and we will try to create somehow a plastic material. So we go glossy, index, 1.56 to 1.58, something between that. A roughness, really glossy. So we leave this really glossy right now. And I will try to tweak in the same color here. Maybe a little bit off, but let's check it first of all. Let's go specular. Let's copy this color here. Let me look at this. 255, 165 and 158. 165, 158, okay. 165, 158. Uh, 165 and 158. And here 255, okay. So we have some kind of plastic material going on. So we go create shader. So we have the Octane, Octane Mix material. And now we put down here our uh, metal bump material and over it our plastic material. Now let's just simply drop the mix. Let's first of all, let me save this file. But sometimes when you drop a mix material, it can be that Octane crashes. At least it was like that in the past. And where is my bump material? I think, is this my bump? No, this is clean and this is the bump. Okay. So let's drop it over here. Now we get a little bit of this plastic finishing, like I said, but only here in the middle for now. But this is too, too much plastic right now, so we can change here the amount how this get mixed together, so we can, if we go in this direction, we get more and more plastic, and if we go in the other direction, we get more and more metal, and now we just simply have to find this little bit in between here. I think like this might be okay, but we really need to go down a little bit with the glossiness as well, in the plastic material, so I think roughness maybe of 0. Not too much, but a little bit. 
uh, maybe something like this 0.02 might do and let's maybe go a little bit more down with the plastic material let's make it a little bit more metalish uh, but I think it's getting kind of close also what we could tweak in here in the octane material in the plastic material we could it give some film width because I really think this material somehow is reflecting all kind of color spectrum so it's almost looking some kind of an of a soap bubble you know what I mean exactly those colors are getting here a little bit in so we could try to achieve this here with somehow a film width does it make a difference if I turn this here to white? Yeah, it makes a difference that it's not working anymore. Okay. And maybe like this. Oh. Really hard to tell. Maybe like this, maybe 0.226 here. Um, we are not close enough yet, but I think we're getting there. We're really getting there. So, I really want to copy this mixed material. And instead of the bump material, I want to put in the clean one here, right now. And put the mixed material here over the clean one. So we're getting really everywhere the same look. The only thing is we need here a little bit something. We need here some kind of map, I think. Because there are, there's a lot of detail here on this um, on this Nespresso capsule, as you can see. There is something going on. It's not completely clean, so there, there is a little bit something. So we need to watch for this art. And I also want to see how this works. I think we need to go a little bit more plastic here. Maybe change the amount here to 0.3. And also here the amount to 0.3. So we have both things on the same page. And then with the bump and the rest, yeah, I think we're getting we're getting closer. It's still a little bit too metalish. Let's go 0 point, 0 point 0.5. Let's really try it with 0 point 0.5 here. Let's check again. Yeah, might be okay. Even without the metal, we just have to go with the bump a little bit higher now, I think. Let me change the bump here to 0 0.06 maybe. Yeah, might might look okay. That's maybe 0 0.08. It's coming a little bit better through. Let's try it with, with this 0 0.2 for now. Okay, now also the film with uh, kicks in a little bit. Let's get rid of this for now, maybe. This is really an awful material, to be honest, to create, but I think we're getting closer and closer, to be honest. Let's also make the metal finishing first of all. Let's go create uh, shader, cinema of the octane material, and let's make this kind of silverish. I mean, it's probably aluminium, uh, but I think we can go here with an index of eight and diffuse black. We could also go with an index of six, maybe. Let's let's maybe check it out and really go higher with roughness, something like this. And let's make a selection tag for this as well. So um, select loop selection. Uh, here we go. And make sure that you don't have selected a selection tag, otherwise you will just simply override it instead of making a new one, which is not good. Oh, I have still something from the capsule selected as well. Okay, select this here, this here, this here, and this here. And let's go select set selection. Let's drop our material in there, exactly in between, so now we'll know a little bit better what's going on. I mean, it's probably not it yet. 
No, it looks a little bit too... I think we have to go down with the index, maybe to 6. Maybe even lower. Mm, getting closer, maybe let's try it with 5. Maybe with 4. That might look okay. Can't really tell, I think we have to change the color here. A little bit. Huh. Specular, let's maybe bring this in like this. Mm -hmm. Let's maybe go higher here, let's maybe try it with 8 again, I just wanna see what it looks like. It doesn't look too shabby to be honest. I mean, let's just simply leave it like this for now. We need to change this later on. We really need to... We need to bring up a little bit of a proper lightning and also our table so I can really see how close we are get. I mean, this is at least for me the next step. I think the map here definitely is too big, so we need to change this here. Octane Mix... I should name them properly. Is this with the bump? Yeah, this is Bump Mix. Let's just call this bump mix for now, so know, know a little bit better what's going on. And let me look at this, and we need to go here way higher, let's maybe go 300. Uh, even higher, let's go 600. Higher, let's maybe go 1000. Uh, that's too high probably, let's go... 800 was probably okay. And let's go down with the bump again. Uh, bump... Let's change this to 0.1. 0.05 maybe uh, maybe 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 this is not a big again let's go 600 okay let's just leave it like that for for now um, let's go plane we'll just create a simple plane so this thing is also lying somewhere I mean, it doesn't look too bad right now but we definitely have to tweak things and let's find ourselves a really nice uh, wood texture so here at cgtextures.com or textures.com, what it's called now, you can really find a lot of beautiful and cool maps that you can use over and over again. I think you have like 15 MB a day that you can download for free and for everything else that you want to download on the same day, you just simply have to pay. Uh, but most of the time, I think you're getting along pretty good with 15 MB. And you can do this over and over again, so it would be really a good idea to maybe Sometimes just simply jump on there, use your 15 MB a day, and just simply download some stuff. Um, okay, let me log in here quickly, because you need to register. Alright, so I'm logged in, and let's search here for wood. And let's search for some... Maybe some kind of tree bark. I mean, might look nice as well. I mean, this is some kind of tree bark, I guess. Just on a table, pine close up, stripped bark. Maybe something like this. Maybe this looks nice. This looks this looks kind of nice. This is a map that I already like, really. Okay, let's download this map. Let's go free. Let's download in the biggest resolution. As you can see, you also can download in large, but then you need a premium account, and so yeah, this is not really working for us. So we will just simply go with this map that we have here. Let's go create shader. See for the octane, octane material. And let's load here in the diffuse our map. Cinema of the octane image texture. And let's search for it. Here we go. Downloads. Load this texture. And let's also open it up in Photoshop. Alright, and let's try to create somehow some kind of bump map. Let's just simply let me make this black and white here. Let me tweak here some of the values around. And maybe like this. And turn the yellows out here. Greens. Are there any greens in the picture? I don't think so. No blues. Maybe some magentas. Yeah, but I think this can work pretty good as, an, as a bump map already. So we could try it in the other direction. No, this will not be working out for us. Okay, let's click OK. And I think this is good enough for a bump map. We don't really have to be so accurate here. So let me save this first of all. In our correct folder. Uh, let's call this... Bug underscore bump. Okay, 
discard layers, even though we don't have any layers to discard right now because we're only working on one. Doesn't matter. Bump, Cinema for the Octane image texture. Let's load this bump map that we just created. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay. And let's go. I mean, let's just simply drop it on here for now. Onto our plane. Let's see how it's aligned. Way too big, that's for sure. So let's go cubic and let's make it really small. Let's make it 10 10. Uh, 10 10 gets a lot of reputations. This might be too small. So let's go here. Uh, we, we can leave, I think. We might be okay. But let's go nuts here in the lengths. Let's maybe go here something like 35. And let's bring this. Let's maybe just simply change the plane here. Let me try an angle where we really can see what's going on. Okay. So the map is really, really low to be honest. Ay, 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 ay. So I think we have to go way smaller, otherwise, this, will, this map will look awful. And I mean, like, really awful. If we are that up close. So let's leave this here 12 and let's change the plane here a little bit more. Let's go here into the coordinates. Change this. Here in the X. Okay. The map does not really look good right now. Huh! I don't like this. There's also not really much bump going on, which I don't like. Let's maybe try it with this place. This place should give us way more uh, stuff to work with. So let's go here. Displacement. Cinema for the Octane. Displacement. And let's load our map. Texture. Bitmap Spark Bump. And let's go 0.1 centimeter for now. And let's bring the resolution up to 2048. Yeah, it gives us for sure a lot more detail. Let's maybe invert the map for now. Uh, invert, invert. Let's maybe change the black point here to 1 and the white point here to 0. This should give us an invert here. Yeah. And let's also set the mid level to minus 0.1. Oh, this is not working. Yeah, of course. Okay. Let's maybe go here higher. Let's maybe go 0.2 here. Let's leave the mid level for now. No, let's not leave the mid level. Let's 0.2 in the mid level as well. Maybe 0.6. Okay, 0.8. Yeah, okay. Hmm, and let me load a complete different HDRI map here as well. I don't really think I can work with this bug, to be honest. I really think, I don't think that this texture looks any good. I mean, it doesn't matter under, under which lightning conditions. It's just simply, just simply too low. That's not really a, a good map. Let me search for a good bug map on my heart.